Did you know that over 20% of all the Bitcoin mined so far has been lost? Bitcoins continue to be lost every day, and to quote Satoshi Nakamoto, lost coins only make everyone else's coins worth slightly more. This is good news for those of us who take good care of our private keys. But the poor souls who saw their fortunes disappear would probably beg to differ. Now, today I'm going to tell you about some of the largest recorded losses of Bitcoin, whether it's possible to recover those Bitcoins, and how you might be able to recover any crypto you've lost. Before we feel the pain, there's a disclaimer I need to explain. If you think I'm going to tell you what to do with your money, I must admit that's a bit funny. That's because everything in this video is purely educational content. I'm not a financial advisor, yet. If this channel is foreign to you, my name is Guy and crypto is what I do. The Coin Bureau is home to some of the highest quality crypto content on YouTube. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, tutorials, and market moves. Everything you need to know to make a bull run more fun. If this sounds right up your alley, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell before the crypto market starts to rally. Be sure to take note of the timestamps in the video timeline. You can use them to skip to any topics that sound mighty fine. Watching the whole way through will help this video get more views, but the choice is up to you. Now that you know the biz, let's look at why so much Bitcoin has been lost and where it probably is. On January the 3rd, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto mined the first block on the Bitcoin blockchain, generating a block reward of 50 BTC. For the first year or so, the only people mining Bitcoin were Satoshi, Hal Finney, and a few dozen other cypherpunks who were part of the digital currency scene. Back then, nobody believed that Bitcoin would ever become a thing. This changed in May 2010, when Laszlo Hanyex paid someone 10,000 BTC to buy two Papa John's pizzas. This is believed to be the first commercial transaction involving Bitcoin. It gave BTC an official price of less than half a cent and proved that BTC had the potential to become an actual currency someday. A few months later, the infamous Mt. Gox cryptocurrency exchange was founded, and by 2011, there were half a dozen cryptocurrencies on the market, including Litecoin. Almost 10 years ago to the day, Bitcoin saw its first bull market top of $33. This was apparently caused by the announcement that WikiLeaks would be accepting Bitcoin for donations. By that point, over 5 million BTC had been mined, and this price action motivated many miners to sell some or all of their BTC for a comfy cash out. However, 1.9 million of that BTC didn't move. It didn't move during the second bull market in 2013. It didn't move during the third bull market in 2017. And it hasn't moved during this bull market either. It's possible that the entities holding this BTC are just hardcore hodlers, but it's more likely that they threw in the towel before Bitcoin really took off and lost access to their private keys as a result. Chainalysis estimates that another 2 million BTC has been lost since the first bull market in 2011. This is because a total of nearly 4 million BTC has not moved since that time. Whereas the old Bitcoin was mostly lost due to abandonment, most of the Bitcoins lost since 2011 were because of human error. While most Bitcoin losses have not been publicized, there are a few which have made the headlines over the years. So here is the Bitcoin Loss Hall of Fame, from smallest to largest-ish. I'll also note that I've added a few extra narrative details to spice some of these stories up. Gabriel Abed is a cryptocurrency entrepreneur from Barbados. He's the founder of a series of software companies and crypto VC firms. He also advises the World Economic Forum about cryptocurrencies. On one fateful day in 2011, Gabriel came into work and noticed that his work computer was missing. He suddenly remembered that everyone in the office was scheduled to get a new work computer on that day. There's just one small problem, and that's that the private keys to his 800 BTC were on his work computer. Now, Gabriel figured that his laptop couldn't have gotten far, so he went looking around the office for where it could be. After a few seconds, he came across the desk of one of his colleagues who had all the laptops in the office stacked up there. 
Breathing a sigh of relief, Gabriel asked his colleague if he could have his laptop back for a moment to move his private keys to a USB stick. Gabriel's colleague froze, then slowly explained that he had just finished formatting all the laptops. In other words, that data was gone. Now, luckily for Gabriel, that 800 BTC was just a small fraction of his Bitcoin holdings, which he spread out between multiple wallets in case something like this ever happened. Funnily enough, Gabriel cashed out 800 BTC last year to purchase 100 acres of oceanfront land in Barbados. Good thing all his BTC wasn't on a single device. Too bad the next guy didn't think to do the same. Campbell Simpson is a journalist and freelance writer from Australia. He worked for Gizmodo for three years and currently works for one of the largest telecommunications companies in Australia. In 2010, Campbell was working as a journalist for a small computer technology website. As part of his job, he needed to be up to date on everything going on in that industry. This included reading articles from other tech websites and, after coming across an article about Bitcoin from Wired, Campbell decided to buy some Bitcoin for the lols. Because this was before any cryptocurrency exchanges existed, Campbell's only option was to go to the Bitcoin Talk forum and arrange a risky peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Being aware of the possibility that he could get scammed, Campbell decided to buy just $25 worth of BTC. Besides, Bitcoin was just some meaningless internet money at the time. To Campbell's surprise, the peer-to-peer -peer transaction ended up being legit. Since Bitcoin was trading for around one cent at the time, his $25 netted him over 1,400 BTC. Knowing that Bitcoin wallets that are actively connected to the internet are less secure than offline wallets, Campbell decided to put his wallet information on a hard drive containing his pirated movies. After a nasty breakup with his girlfriend a few months later, Campbell decided to temporarily move back in with his parents. During that move, he came across his hard drive and decided to plug it in and see what was on it. He noticed that it was clicking and decided to throw it out. After all, everything on there was worthless, right? In early 2011, Campbell read that the price of Bitcoin had hit a dollar. He was, quote, a little bit pissed about throwing out his hard drive, and that feeling grew as Bitcoin approached its $33 high. Campbell has not succeeded in wiping his memory of his mistake, and the subsequent bull markets have definitely not helped with that. Today, his lost BTC is worth over $55 million. On the bright side, when Campbell detailed this story in 2017, he noted that he had invested heavily into Dogecoin, so maybe he still made bank. Not only that, but it might be theoretically possible to recover the hard drive he threw out because of how well landfills track where garbage is dumped on any given day. The next guy on the list has tried to do exactly that with his lost hard drive. James Howells is a computer systems engineer from the United Kingdom. He built various technologies for cryptocurrencies, namely a point-of-sale terminal for Bitcoin Cash. When the 2008 financial crisis began, James didn't believe what the media was telling him, so he took it upon himself to learn about how money really works. In his own words, he didn't like what he found. James learned about Bitcoin shortly after Satoshi mined the first block. James decided to join in, and in doing so, he became one of the first Bitcoin miners alongside Satoshi and company. After mining Bitcoin for a few weeks, James's girlfriend began to complain about the constant fan noise coming from his gaming laptop at night, which is when he would run his mining operations. James figured that he might as well stop mining to stop the whining, since there was little to no chance that Bitcoin would deliver on its implicit promises. After all, if it got too big, it would probably just get banned. Just in case, though, James decided to keep the 7,500 BTC he had mined on his hard drive for safekeeping. Eventually, he swapped the hard drive on his gaming PC for a bigger one and decided to put the old BTC hard drive in a drawer next to an identical blank hard drive with no data on it. What could go wrong? In 2013, Bitcoin made the news because of its bull run, and James remembered that he had 7,500 BTC, which was now worth millions of dollars. 
He plugged in the hard drive and nothing. There was no data on the drive. James's heart stopped. He realized that he had thrown out one of the two drives a few months earlier. He vividly remembered having second thoughts about throwing the drive in the bin, but he was certain that he had thrown out the blank drive and not the one with his BTC on. He didn't bother to double check either. Now, hope was not lost, however, because James knew that his hard drive had ended up in a landfill not far from his house. After speaking with the employees there, he even figured out which part of the landfill it was in. Now, when James approached the city council to ask for permission to dig it up, they said no, even when he offered to give them a cut of his BTC. Now, this is because digging out his hard drive in a way that isn't damaging to the environment would cost millions of pounds, and there's no guarantee that the BTC can be retrieved from the hard drive. If the mission fails, the city would be left footing the bill. James has been trying to convince the city council ever since, and his most recent attempt was in January this year. Because Bitcoin keeps going up in value, James believes it's only a matter of time before giving them a cut of that BTC is too good of an offer to pass up. Today, James's BTC is worth $300 million. If only the next guy had it this easy. Stefan Thomas is a software developer from the United States. He's the former CTO of Ripple Labs and is currently the CEO of a web monetization platform that leverages Ripple's Interledger protocol. In 2011, Stefan was given over 7,000 BTC as payment for producing a YouTube video that explains how Bitcoin works. I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you're interested. Naturally, Stefan wanted to keep his private keys as safe as possible. And what better way to do that than to use a top-of-the-line encrypted USB stick? A few months later, Bitcoin began its first bull run, and Stefan knew that it was high time to take some profits. So he plugged in his Kingston iron key and entered his password. The password was incorrect, and this used up one of the 10 password attempts the USB gives him before it automatically deletes all the files on the device. No biggie, Stefan had written the password down on a piece of paper just in case. Lo and behold, the paper with the password was nowhere to be found. Since 2011, Stefan has tried eight variations of his most frequently used passwords with his iron key and only has two tries left. Today, Stefan's BTC is worth $280 million. He's tried everything under the sun to remember the password and continues to lose sleep over his locked BTC to this day. According to Stefan, there is only one thing left to try. Quote, there is a way to take a scanning electron microscope and take apart the physical chip and literally go into the silicon chip and take away layer by layer like a few atoms thick and then read out the actual memory cells. And then with that technique, you should be able to bypass that limit of 10 tries. And then you can have a supercomputer try, you know, billions of passwords per second. Obviously, this is much easier said than done. And it's also a much more expensive operation than what our previous Hall of Famer has in mind. However, it becomes much more feasible as Bitcoin continues to increase in price and the cost of this kind of data recovery technology continues to fall. It won't be long before quantum computers hit the market, and many people believe that this will be a threat to Bitcoin. You can learn about how much of a threat quantum computing actually is by watching my video about Bitcoin's biggest risks. You can find it using the link up there in the top right. Now, at this point, you might be wondering whether it's possible to recover lost cryptocurrency. Well, believe it or not, it is theoretically possible, but it depends on the circumstances. Let's start with the first scenario, which is deleting files related to your cryptocurrency wallet. If you've permanently deleted the file, by emptying your recycle bin or trash folder, it should still be possible to recover the file on your own using a free data recovery tool like Recover. If that doesn't work, a data recovery service can easily find the file, assuming you didn't format your computer like that first bloke's coworker. Even then, it might still be possible to recover. When it comes to those hard drives that were thrown out, more often than not, these end up in a local landfill since e-waste is difficult and sometimes impossible to recycle. As I mentioned earlier, landfills usually keep detailed records of where and when they dump their garbage. All you would need to do is find out where your drive is buried and find it amongst the rubbish. 
Assuming you manage to find the hard drive, the likelihood of recovering your crypto data is actually pretty high. All that's required is for the disks inside the drive to be physically intact and not be next to a magnet or drowning in some corrosive acid. If you're dealing with a USB stick or a solid state hard drive, you'd better cross your fingers that there's no serious water damage. Once you've retrieved your storage device, you'll need to take it to a data recovery service since it probably won't boot up if you plug it in. Now, as it so happens, you don't even need to recover all of the data on your device to recover your wallet. If you can get even just a fragment of your wallet password, seed phrase, or private keys, there is a service in the United States that can brute force the rest of it. In plain English, they basically guess the remainder of the missing data with a powerful computer. The more data they have to work with, the higher the likelihood that they can guess the rest. They can also help if you have any passwords, seed phrases, or private keys that you lost but partially remember. The more you remember, the better your odds. Now, on that note, there is actually a licensed hypnotist in the US who specializes in helping people remember their cryptocurrency wallet passwords. I know it sounds silly, but hypnotism is surprisingly legit. According to the Wall Street Journal, this particular fellow has a 50% success rate in helping clients recover their wallet passwords. Now, you should also know that some cryptocurrency wallets like the MetaMask Web Wallet Browser extension have tools that can help you recover your wallet information if you forget your password. Unfortunately, these tools don't work if you uninstall and reinstall the wallet, as I found when making my MetaMask tutorial. In any case, it's worth getting in touch with the team behind your crypto wallet to see if there's anything that can be done. As they say, though, prevention is better than cure. In the case of cryptocurrency, this means you must always remember to write down your seed phrase and keep it in a safe place. The safest way to store your cryptocurrency is to use an offline device like a hardware wallet, and you can learn about which one is best for you by using that link up there in the top right. I almost forgot. I need to tell you who the biggest Bitcoin loser is. Well, as far as I know, this title is held by Alex Jones, who somehow lost a laptop containing 10,000 BTC that was given to him by Bitcoin billionaire Max Kaiser in 2011. That Bitcoin would be worth over $400 million today. And the craziest part is that this enormous figure is still a drop in the bucket when compared to the $200 billion total of all the lost BTC. Now, in all fairness, it is possible that not all that BTC is actually lost, and that's because the measure being used isn't bulletproof. There could very well be some hardcore Bitcoin hodlers among us, and one of them might even be Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Even though a lot of Bitcoin's early adopters seem to have fallen off the radar, every so often we get a crypto news headline exclaiming that a decade-old wallet has begun moving its BTC. The closer we get to key price zones like 100k, the higher the likelihood we'll see these ancient wallets come back to life. Similarly, I think there will come a point where all the Bitcoin that has been thrown out will become so valuable to find that people will go digging through the garbage to find it regardless of the red tape. As James Howells noted in a 2018 talk, if NASA was able to recover 99.9% .9 of the data from the hard drives on the Columbia shuttle which exploded and fell into the ocean, then it's clearly possible to recover most of the Bitcoin that's been lost in landfills. Now, it wouldn't be easy and there would be no guarantees, but it is very doable nonetheless. Recovery is likely and the payouts would be larger than any other buried treasure on the planet. The more I think about it, the more I want to grab my shovel and start digging. For now, though, I'll just stick to stacking sats in my hardware wallet. If you enjoyed today's crypto clip, be sure to give that like button a click. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ping that notification bell so you know when the next episode of the Coin Bureau hits the tube. If your thirst for crypto content can't be quenched, you can find more of me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. You can also join my free Telegram channel for daily crypto updates and subscribe to my weekly newsletter to get the insider information you need to make the most of this bull market. If you want the world to know you're a crypto pro, swipe some comfy crypto merch from the Coin Bureau merch store. That includes this epic HODL hoodie. You can find your way to my socials, Telegram, newsletter, and merch store 
using those handy links in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, Guy over and out. Thank <laughs> you.